Hey guys, so I am an educator at Unacademy and you can follow me over there if you are interested to watch videos on basic concepts of chemistry or physical chemistry topics. You can also recommend this to your juniors and to your younger siblings, right? All you need to do is download the Unacademy learning app and watch my videos over there. Now let's just begin with our topic. So a very good morning to you guys. Now I'll be discussing some questions from NMR spectroscopy, specifically from the physical spectroscopy part. And uh, I, I actually I did not intend to make this video, but uh, lately I saw on YouTube that there are a lot of videos which are giving incorrect information regarding NMR. And since I do it on a day-to-day -day basis, so I have more than adequate information to guide you for the uh, CSI net exam, right? So we'll do questions one by one. Now this was the most requested question, this one over here. Okay, uh, sorry, just a second. Yeah, so this was one of, one of the most requested question and uh, I'll solve them uh, once I move from one question to the other, right? So I'll gradually increase the level of the questions and then we'll move on to this question. This I'll discuss on the last, okay? So the correct statement, first of all, in the context of NMR spectroscopy is, um, so this is the question that is given to us. We have to find the correct statement. So the first uh, statement says static magnetic field is used to induce transition between the spin states. Okay, so static magnetic field is not required to induce transition between the spin states. It's actually the frequency or the radio frequency that you use. The radio frequency is actually responsible for uh, inducing transition between spin states. Okay, so what happens is say let's say we have a nucleus. Basically, we need an active nucleus. That is, the spin should be non-zero. So if I talk about um, a hydrogen atom or proton, it has spin half, right? So it gets split into minus half and plus half on application of magnetic field. So if we apply no magnetic field, it's degenerate. But once you apply the magnetic field, it splits into plus half and minus half. Okay. Now, so this splitting, this energy, this splitting or this, uh, this, you know, this energy difference that you can see over here, this whole energy difference between uh, the two states that arises because of your, um, because of your magnetic field right so the greater the magnetic field applied applied the greater will be the difference between these two states okay so if i increase the magnetic field the, the energy gap between these two states that is this state and this state is going to increase whereas the frequency that i provide the radio frequency the radio frequency that i provide that is responsible for carrying uh, you know carrying atoms from uh, this energy state to this energy state so this is because of radio frequency but the gap that or originates is because of the magnetic field right so uh, then they say static magnetic field is used to induce spin spin coupling that is absolutely incorrect so the correct answer is option number 3 where it is clearly mentioned that static magnetic field is used to create population difference between the spin states so how will a population difference be created once the energy gap is increased uh, there will be uh, more uh, more atoms in the lower energy ground state and uh, less atoms in the higher energy ground state uh, higher energy excited state right so that is why uh, this uh, that is why if we apply a more magnetic field the gap will more increase further and the population dif difference will also increase further okay now there are some more statements that you need to know so this gap this gap between the two spin states is given by delta e and delta is equal to h cross gamma b naught where gamma is your gyro magnetic ratio okay gamma is your gyro magnetic ratio and b is your applied magnetic field all right so b over here is the applied magnetic field it's the magnetic field applied and gamma is your gyro magnetic ratio which is a intrinsic property of the nucleus okay so if we have a nitrogen nucleus let's say 15 nitrogen it will have some gyro magnetic ratio 13c has some gyro magnetic ratio that is a intrinsic property of the nucleus and we also know that energy is equal to h mu okay so if we replace the value h mu over here in this equation if we replace the value over here h mu in this equation so we get frequency or the radio frequency is equal to gamma b naught upon 2 pi so this is a very important formula gamma b naught upon 2 pi just remember that now your gyro magnetic ratio is also equal to g into mu n upon h cross where g is called as the spectroscopic splitting factor and this is where a lot of people are uh, you know confused that g is gyro magnetic ratio no g is not the gyro magnetic ratio gyro magnetic ratio is a gamma g is a G, it's, it's called g factor commonly but it's actually a spectroscopic splitting factor now mu n is also a mu n over here is bohr magneton this is a constant and h cross is also, also a constant so in 
in short if our b naught is constant that is the magnetic field that we are applying is constant and obviously 2 pi is also constant then your your frequency is proportional to the gyromagnetic ratio and gyromagnetic ratio further is proportional to g that is the spectroscopic splitting, splitting factor right okay so now let's do some questions in a 200 megahertz nmr spectrometer a molecule shows two doublets separated by 2 ppm okay now this is i have uh, I have already told you many times but I will just tell you once again whatever be the megahertz of the instrument like let's say we have a 200 megahertz instrument then uh, from 0 ppm to 1 ppm the difference will be 200 so from then one, from 1 to 2 ppm again the difference will be 200 hertz so from 0 to 1 ppm it's 200 hertz from 1 to 2 ppm it will be 100 hertz then from 2 to 3 ppm also it will be uh, 200 hertz okay so it will go like this then from 3 to 4 again it will be 200 hertz so each ppm gap is equal to the uh, basically the the instrument that you are using so if you are using a 200 megahertz instrument then 1 ppm is equal to 200 hertz not megahertz hertz okay then 2 ppm is equal to 400 hertz like that so it's saying the separation between these two signals and the coupling constant in a 600 megahertz spectrometer so earlier we were using a 200 megahertz now we have a 600 megahertz spectrometer so the ppm remains the same okay this is a very this is a constant value no matter if you use 600 megahertz or 1200 megahertz or 5000 megahertz it will remain 2 ppm the gap between the two signals will remain 2 ppm only the frequency will change so now in 200 hertz uh, megahertz instrument we had 400 hertz between for 2 ppm we, the difference was from 0 to 2 it was 400 hertz but for 600 megahertz instrument so now what will happen 0 to 1 will be 600 and 1 to 2 will again be 600 so the gap between so gap between 2 ppms will be 1200 hertz so the 1200 uh, 12, so we got 1200 hertz uh, the frequency uh, sorry the gap between the two signals we got as equal to 1200 hertz in ppm the gap will remain same in gap in ppm the gap will be only two only no matter what the uh, frequency of the instrument is but uh, the gap in terms of hertz will increase if we increase the frequency of the instrument and they are also also asking what is the coupling constant now coupling constant in 200 megahertz instrument is 10 hertz so what will be the uh, coupling constant in 600 megahertz instrument so just remember one thing you know sometimes just pay attention uh, by just looking at the um, you know formula or the term now coupling constant why is it called a constant there has to be some reason why it's called a constant and it is called a constant because no matter what the frequency of the instrument is the coupling constant will remain same even in hertz so the coupling constant will remain same that is 10, 10 hertz and the correct answer will be option number 4. So just remember no matter how much we change the frequency the coupling constant in hertz will remain the same. The ppm uh, between the two, uh, two peaks will also remain the same only the value will change in hertz if we increase or decrease the frequency. Alright okay. I hope the concept is now very clear. Now the next question is proton NMR spectrum of an organic compound recorded on a 500 megahertz spectrometer showed a quartet with lines these four lines so it's asking the chemical shift value now whenever you're given a quartet um, the chemical shift value is actually the average of the center peaks so if you see in this instrument uh, the 1753 and 1747 are the center peaks so if you take the average of these two it comes out to be 1750 hertz okay or other thing you can do is you can take this average of all the four peaks you can do that or you can take the average of two center peaks no matter what you do you will get the average as 1750 hertz that will be the chemical shift now it's a 500 megahertz instrument so how will you find the chemical shift so 0 to 1 ppm will be 500 1 to 2 ppm will again be 500 2 to 3 will again be 500 so this comes out to be 1500 and it's given to us that we have found out that it's 1750 so that means 3 and then, then 3 to 4 will be again 500 but we want 250 more so half of 3 and 4 so that means 3.5 ppm so 0 to 3.5 so this is the 3.5 ppm is the chemical shift value all right now wh what are they asking the coupling constant for the quarterate so the coupling constant for the quarterate is the uh, basically the gap between two adjacent peaks so two adjacent peaks over here are 1741 and 1747 so that is 6 hertz or you can see 1747 and 1753 again 6 hertz or 1753 and 1759 again 6 hertz so the correct answer is 3.5 ppm and 6 hertz okay right 
now this is again an important question and this has been asked a numerous amount of times in december 2017 also it was asked but it was related to a 13 cnmr so for a certain magnetic field strength a free proton spin transition occurs at 700 megahertz so it's given certain magnetic field some particular value of magnetic field the transition is occurring at 700 megahertz for a proton uh, for a proton right keeping the magnetic field strength constant the, four, the uh, 14 in nucleus will resonate at so they are asking at what frequency will the 14 in nitrogen nucleus resonate given that uh, gp is equal to 5.6 and g14n is equal to 0.4 so this is given to us now simply we know i had also helped you derive earlier that your um, frequency is proportional to gyromagnetic ratio is proportional to the split, spectroscopic splitting factor or the g factor so basically we have frequency equal to gamma b0 by 2 pi and b0 is constant because they have given the magnetic field remain constant for both the nucleus so b0 is constant 2 pi is also a constant so basically your v is proportional to gamma and gamma is proportional to g because your Bohr magneton is constant and h cross is constant right so your so we can say that the frequency is, is proportional to your g, g factor right so vh upon vn that is vh is v of proton or i'll say vp is equal to v is upon vn is equal to gh that is g uh, splitting factor of proton upon splitting factor of uh, g factor of nitrogen right so it's, it's given to us that the proton resonates at 700 megahertz and we can say let's say the new nitrogen um, resonates at x megahertz which is equal to 5.6 uh, which is equal to 5.6 upon 0.4 because the values are given to us gp is given to us as 5.6 that is g proton is given to us as 5.6 and g nitrogen is given to us as 0.4 so if you divide this 0.4 by 0.56 you'll get 14 value so x equal to 700 by 14 and if you do that the answer comes out to be 50 hertz so the correct answer is option number four okay now let's move on to the first question which is important the first question says that in an NMR spectrometer containing a 2.5 tesla magnet Larmor precession frequency of a proton is 100 megahertz so for 2.5 tesla magnetic field the precession frequency or the frequency is 100 megahertz the radio, the radio frequency used in this spectrometer has an associated magnetic field strength of 2.5 into 10 to the power minus 4 tesla okay the, so now we have decreased the magnetic field and uh, they have not given what the radio frequency is going to be so they are asking the duration of a 90 degree pulse in this instrument so this is where a lot of students get confused so first of all let me tell you the uh, formula for pulse so the formula for pulse is rf that is the radio frequency applied is equal to 1 upon 4 into t where t is your duration of the pulse so t i have written t pi by 4 because it's a 90 degree pulse so that's why i've written t pi by 4 so this is the formula for 90 degree pulse uh, but we don't know the radio frequency because the radio frequency is not given to us but the associated magnetic field is given to us that is 2.5 into 10 to the power minus 4 tesla now radio frequency or simply frequency is equal to gamma b0 upon 2 pi and uh, now what is happening is the the gamma is constant because we are doing it for the proton only we are not doing it for any other nucleus so gamma will be constant so gamma is constant and 2 pi is constant so only the value of b is changing that is the magnetic field is changing so what we can say that the radio frequency at uh, so the radio frequency for 2.5 tesla is given to us radio frequency for 2.5 tesla is given to us you can see for 2.5 tesla the radio frequency is 100 megahertz but for 2.5 into 10 to the power minus 4 tesla for this magnetic field the radio frequency is not given to us so we can simply equate so gamma is constant 2 pi is also constant so radio frequency 1 uh, so rf1 that is 100 megahertz upon rf2 that we need to find out is equal to 2.5 tesla this is 2.5 tesla upon the magnetic field that is 2.5 into 10 to the power minus 4 tesla that is given to us now this 100 is in megahertz so i need to convert it into hertz first because i need to find the answer in seconds and we know that uh, hertz is inverse of time okay so 100 into 10 to the power 6 hertz we can write this as 100 into 10 to the power 6 hertz right so now the uh, now the units are in hertz so if you try and solve this 2.5 gets cancelled uh, this 10.5 10.4 goes above and becomes 10 to the power 4 and this 10 to the power 4 and 10 to the power 6 cancel out and we get 10 to the power 2 so rf2 becomes equal to 10 into 100 into 10 to the power 2 which is 
basically 10,000 hertz. So we got the value of radio frequency as 10,000 hertz. Now simply we re uh, replace this value over here. So we need to find this value. So t pi, t pi by 4 is equal to 1 upon 4 into 10,000. And if you calculate this, this comes out to be 25 into 10 to the power minus 6 seconds. So I hope you were able to understand some aspects from this video. And thank you so much for watching and also share it with your friends. Uh, thank you.